Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I apologize for recently using different narrators in my videos. This is because the narrator I usually use has become difficult to access. Whenever I find a suitable replacement, I always encounter minor shortcomings with that narrator. So, in essence, I ask for forgiveness for this issue. Hopefully, things will improve in the future. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. When I say, we, in the title of this video, I don't mean us shrews. I think most of us do care about these things I am going to talk about. The we I speak of, is the culture at large. Even though shrews may think and wonder about these things, we probably just scratch our heads about them. In most cases, no one has taken surveys or written articles about such things. Some have, of course, but those forays into the effort to answer these questions are isolated to obscure research that most people never see. Let me start with a silly one, but important nonetheless. Well, at least important to those of us who think this sort of thing is important. What percentage of men pee sitting on the toilet rather than standing up? And how has this number changed over the past three or four decades? Now, forgive me if you find this offensive or irrelevant. I only bring it up here because, believe it or not, I read about this in some serious article I was perusing a few months back. I can't remember details about the article, but I do remember this particular observation. Why is this important? Well, maybe it isn't, but it might be an indicator of things. An indicator that most people simply do not think is meaningful or anything purposeful. Now, I am not implying that men who pee sitting down have lost their masculinity. But I do believe the culture, or the agenda if you prefer, is behind a campaign focused on emasculation. Men, who are largely unconscious these days, as most people in general are, will just slide into this campaign without giving it much thought. Their psychology will go along with that slide, and soon to follow our behavioral differences. Is sitting to be part of that emasculating behavior? The article I read seemed to think it was. I wonder what most of you think. What about something a bit more serious? How about the sharp decline in free play among children? This phenomenon has indeed been written about and investigated, but most people just pawn it off as a sign of the times. Maybe it is, but the consequences are pretty daunting. Those of you out there with kids know just what I am talking about. I cannot tell you the number of times I have read in comments and in articles how back in our day, us old folks, we played. And we certainly played freely. No one told us what to do from sunup to sundown when we would go out with our peer tribe and roam the neighborhood. What a life that was. The stuff of our adventures, my friends and I would just make up would rival any fantasy novel. It was nuts and spectacular. Today, I doubt if much creativity and imagination goes on in most kids' minds these days. I also recently read an article about screen time addiction. I was rather blown away. The article told the story of some kid who was having horrible trouble in school. He was destructive, a recluse, unsocial, failing all his studies, and had no interest in just about anything kids his age have an interest in. A total zero. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think all kids who do not follow the line the majority of kids are following are messed up but this case sounded a bit dicey. Sure enough, he spent nearly every waking moment staring at a screen. The parents took him to some psychological specialist in screen time issues, I didn't know such a thing existed, and almost immediately he started to improve. After a while, he was the epitome of the perfect kid, well, that sort of bothered me. I have searched again for this article and can't find it, ah, uh, maybe it was a dream, so, I am sorry I don't have a link to share with you. If anyone runs across it, let me know. 
There are many articles about the dangers of screen time and just as many poo-pooing the dangers, usually from the big institutions. Funny how often you see that combo, a limited hangout sort of thing. We'll admit there is a concern, but it isn't as bad as you think it is. We see this sort of presentation everywhere, about nearly everything we are wondering about. Yes, you are right there are some apprehensions, but experts say the concern is minimal. Yeah, right. I have several teachers who come in for therapy, and what I hear that is going on in the schools is really frightening. Of course, I am not saying what I hear is representative of every school district everywhere in the world, but I think it does illustrate a general trend in the more woke areas of Western nations. Of course, we all know about the trans story hour. Again, I have no way of knowing how prevalent this is. But that is also one of the dangers regarding these things we sheep don't care about. It is very easy to dismiss this stuff with a comment like, well, that isn't happening here. Other school issues are just too numerous to mention. Certainly, those of you with kids know what they are. Us old folks and childless shrews may not know much about them. But it is very serious, very serious indeed. The big things you and I know and care about, impending CBDCs, social credit scoring, 15-minute cities, UBIs, and digital IDs. There are a slew of other similar horrors heading down the pike such as restrictions in international travel, ultimately all travel, upcoming pandemics and friends, and social restrictions. These we know, but the sheep don't, and if they do, they don't care. We are now inundated with the many thousands of seemingly insignificant things the general population does not care about, and even shrews may not think much about. These include the decimation of music, arts, literature, and cinema, being forced into a rent-slash-streaming-only mode of conveyance, as well as the destruction of the arts through AI. The issues regarding diversity, equity and inclusion are eating away at our individuality and creativity. Indeed, DEI is eating away at the very things it is touted as protecting. The attack of the family, sexuality, masculinity, and femininity is relentless. Chemtrails, fluoride, the overuse of antibiotics, dangerous ubiquitous visits to the doctor, pointless pharmaceuticals, fast food, alcohol, rampant pornography, illicit drugs, innocuous weed, antidepressants, benzodiazepines, and thousands more examples are indeed killing us softly. Most of these dangers people do not think about, nor care much about if they did. It's all business as usual. How many things can you cite in our daily lives that you can identify as intentional erosion? Transhumanism takes form in dozens and dozens of medical interventions. The indoctrination of fear is taking place in nearly every interface we have, with the media, the news, music, art, literature, cinema and even in our daily intercourse with friends, family, and co-workers. The slow bleed out of our soul takes place daily with a complete and utter disregard for anything in life that has a spiritual or religious angle. Tiny jobs, tiny cuts, tiny restrictions, tiny removals of freedom, individuality, creativity, and uniqueness are being dispensed day in and day out, and the consequences of these minor assaults add up. We surely, as a human race, will eventually die of a thousand cuts. More like several million if you asked me. But no one seems to care. Now, it's time for me to hear from you, what are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.